Chancellor, Dr. Ranveer Singh, National Union. The Chief Justice of India and Mr. Anand Delhi, the Acting Chief Justice of Delhi High Court and the Chancellor of Anand Delhi, former Chancellor of Anand Delhi, Mr. Justice Dalveer Bhandari, Judge Principal of Justice, and Mrs. Madhu Bhandari, Justice Gita Mitchell, Judge Delhi High Court, former Chief Justice of India, this is the Supreme Court of India and the High Court sitting in retirement. Members of the Governing Council, the Executive Council, the Academic Council, and of New Delhi, fellow High Chancellors and Academics, Judicial Officers and the Government Officials, Members of the Bar, and the National University of Delhi Class of 2013, and their parents, and respected invitees, faculty members, staff and dear students of New Delhi, media and press, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and welcome to the first convocation of National Lawyers to Delhi. I would like to thank Shri Pranam Mukherjee, President of India, our chief guest, for raising this occasion and making it a memorable event for the young minds who will proudly be due to us today. A dream to improve the legal education in the country and the National Law School have come a long way in that direction. And today the NLU Delhi adds to that dream. NLU Delhi has been around for five years, which is hardly a period to invade the institution. Sir, we take extreme priority what we have achieved over the last five years. The law school has gone from strength to strength in this period. I would like to applaud and congratulate our dedicated and competent faculty and students, amidst the staff who have been the pillars we had success. Mr. President, sir, I will now take a few minutes to share the achievements of the university. And it is that it provides BAMB honors, LLM, PhD degrees, along with scores of diploma courses. And we, the most important diploma we provide is we are the only law school in the country is judging and court management. Till now, we have conducted 425 training and MOC program like the Rajiv Gandhi Rocket Training Scheme, capacity building and training for protection officers. We have organized over 100 national and international conferences, seminars, and workshops, providing a platform to discuss social, legal, and other issues with a view to enhance awareness and make policy recommendations. Mr. President, sir, we have been fortunate to receive unprecedented support from the government of the city of Delhi, especially from the Chief Minister. Shrimati Sri Radhikshet and ever inspiring patronage and guidance of the High Court of Delhi and the Supreme Court. This has in fact helped us to provide the state of the art infrastructure facilities to our students. To build great universities, three things are essential educate funding, complete intellectual freedom, and perhaps most importantly, self governance. We were fortunate to have all the three in abundance. The results are for everyone to see. The university boasts a public library which is the best in the country and compares to the best outside India. We have almost 40,000 books and the best of software which anybody can have in any IEB law school. In just five years, we have assigned more than 20 MOUs and we have activated about 26 research centers. Uh, being conscious of our responsibilities, we have established various endowments and scholarship schemes to motivate our students. Mr. Rajiv Sir, and in Delhi prepared the second UPR, Universal Bureau Review Report, under the Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, I was also the part of the delegation which went to uh, Geneva to present the India's report at Switzerland. Me and my faculty take immense pride in our students and their achievements. In fact, whatever we have become today, whatever we have achieved, uh, the success largely due to the students of the 2030 batch. Uh, Mr. President, sir, in 2011, for the first time, we participated in JESA, and uh, it's amazing to note that we were ninth in the world in the very first year we participated in JESA. In 2011 and 12, uh, we won the Oxford Prize India Law Group Competition. In 13, again, we have won the Media Law Group Court at Oxford. We again won Red Cross International Women Law at Hong Kong. We were uh, the best of team in the Asia Pacific Round of the Manifold Match on Airspace Law. Uh, now I would like to share a few thoughts with my graduating students. First of all, build your ladders to climb rather than climbing ladders and measuring success with ladders others have placed before you. Secondly, while you surely like to focus this afternoon on the promises the future holds for you and is full of promises that there will be many friends and accomplishments, just make them the right kind. You can follow whatever road you choose, but if the way you travel is not your own, what difference does it make that you follow it? This is your journey. This is your life. You create the road as you walk. In other words, National Women's Valley, class of 2013, choose well. I wish you all a big difference. 
I wish you all the best of luck in your life. I request Mr. Justice Alphas Kavi, Chief Justice of India and Mr. National Honor Kavi, to release the first issue of the Honor of the National University and present the first copy to the President of India, Sri Panna Mukherjee. Now I request the Chancellor, National Institute Rally to declare the convocation open.
Mr. President, my Lord, the Chief Justice of India, my Lord, Acting Chief Justice of Delhi High Court, distinguished Vice Chancellor, faculty members and staff of the National Law University, Delhi, dear students, gracious ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply humbled by this great gesture of the university. I accept the honorous father with great humility and profound gratitude. Getting recognition from this university is of great significance to me because it's very closely associated with High Court of Delhi, where I started my judicial career more than two decades ago. I am grateful to the Academic Council, Executive Council and Governing Council for selecting me along with Dr. Amrit Desai for this degree. I feel exalted in the distinguished company of Professor Amrit Desai and I am grateful to the institution for this honor. This young university has accomplished and achieved so much nationally and internationally within a short period. It's a matter of great satisfaction for all of us who are involved in setting up this institution. This university has a distinguished report of many achievements nationally and internationally, particularly in the field of moot courts. They have achieved great success. I am extremely grateful to the President for gracing this occasion. We are indebted to distinguish Vice Chancellor of this university because of his untiring efforts, dedication, devotion, and inspiring leadership. Within a short period, this institution has acquired a great name nationally and internationally. I would like to congratulate the graduating class of 2013 I wish them all the best in life. I wish and pray that each one of them become great ambassador of this university and ensure that this becomes one of the finest <coughs> centers for legal education in the world. Thank you once again for this honor. I have the honor to present the Chancellor candidates to the, doc the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Uh, they have been found qualified for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, to which I pray they may be admitted. Candidates taking the degree of Doctor of Philosophy will please stand forward. <laughs> By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor, National Law University, Delhi, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, PhD, in this university. Do you sincerely promise and declare that if admitted to the PhD degree for which you are candidates and for which you have been recommended, you will in your daily life and conversation conduct yourselves as worthy members of this university. Saloni Kandelia and Sophie Joseph, who are awarded PhD degree in this convocation for their research work on international competition policy Indian perspective and custody rights of farmers in the era of globalization. You can receive the details from the Chancellor.
six to eight lawyers who are professionally competent, technically sound, and socially adorable. They will not only enter the bar and the bench, but will also be equipped to address the imperatives of the next millennium and uphold the constitution of India. The location of NLEP in the capital city provides students with an opportunity to observe and participate in the legal and political process of our country. Legal education has undergone a paradigm shift in the last two decades. NLEP must bridge the gap between the theoretical concepts and the practical application. It must ignite inquiry and encourage curiosity. I am happy to see that the students and the faculty have been using the opportunities offered by this university well. They have started legal aid projects, are providing academic inputs for policy making and helping with public interest litigation. Ladies and gentlemen, lawyers play an important role in enabling the public access to justice and ensuring that our constitution becomes a living reality. The legal profession is regarded a noble profession in every society where the rule of law prevails. In India, a large number of our national leaders, including Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, were lawyers. In fact, it can be argued that the training as lawyers and the exposure of our leaders, which they received to legal systems in India and abroad, played a major role in the evolution of our unique freedom struggle. Our freedom struggle sought to raise from the British colonial masters, from the British colonial masters, basic rights, democracy, in a peaceful and non-violent manner, using reason and argument. And democracy in a peaceful and non-violent manner. I would like to request the students of NLEV to always keep in mind the fact that the wonderful education you have received is a contribution of the society and the community estate. The land on which your university stands has been provided by the community. Similarly, these buildings, the books that fill your library, the online database from the money invested by the society in you. The nation invests in the students because they are the future of the nation. Students in turn have the responsibility not just to themselves and their families, but also to this country, its legal system and its people. Graduates from this prestigious university must constantly look for ways in which you can give back to your country. You must be ready for winning at all times to represent the powerless and help them obtain justice. We need an army of smart, committed and altruistic people to give voice to the voices and practice tangible changes in our society. I hope all of you gathered here will take up legal aid for the poor as a lifelong commitment 
and do your utmost to draw attention to the problems of the decent power. However, do not do this demanding gratitude or expecting it. Do it as your duty, your contribution to moral <coughs> to more equal world and a motherland you are proud of and India which has made you what you are to be. Many of us often ask of others what we are unwilling to do ourselves. People curious about corruption will remain willing to bribe to expedite their own work. While demanding strict laws against sexual violence and gender discrimination, public, there are those who continue to perpetuate the same gender discrimination. Some get angry when their seniors do not treat them with courtesy. But why in their behavior to those who are working under them are not the same? What is their expectation? Be the change you want to see in the world. Is the message we received from our father of nations, Mahatma Gandhi. And I will expect all of you young minds and bright minds to keep that lesson in your life, throughout your life. In my personal life, I had to walk three miles to reach my school every day, coming and going six miles, while waiting a small stream. There are many in our country, even today, who continue to do the same. In the larger scheme of things, their struggle should be your own struggle. They are all here, and happiness provides strength to our democracy and community. Therefore, be the person who puts in the effort to bring about the changes and not the one who complains and waits for others to act. Change is never easy. It takes patience, faith and hard work. But what is important? Not to give up. India has changed more in the last six decades than in the previous six centuries. And I am confident in the next 10 years, it will change more than previous 60 years. This is India's enduring vitality at work. India has one of the best constitutions in the world. Its driving principle was a compact between state and citizen, a powerful public-private partnership, nourished by justice, liberty, and equality. The Constitution represented a second liberation, this time from the stranglehold of traditional inequity in gender, caste, community, along with other fetters that had changed us for the very long time. Study the Constitution well. Understand our political system, its institutions and process. Analyze the choices that were made to build up the country into what it is today. Recognize the intelligent choice will need to be made for enabling this country reach her maximum potential, participate in making these changes. 
you are amongst the brightest minds in this country. Help policymakers to make the right choices. Do not walk away from the issue of national importance. Be willing to read large and formulated views on national issues. A democracy cannot be healthy without informed participation. Inform yourself and inform others. Make the governance of this country your passion. Choose to engage with our beautiful, complex, often difficult, and more than often noisy democracy. Help strengthen and refine our legal and political institutions. Pass on what you have learned here and help others understand their rights as well as responsibility. Help the nation create better citizens who are able to access all the opportunities that our country offers. Lawyers are given a special status in this, in this country because social, <coughs> socially recognized, society recognizes the special functions that they perform. Lawyers have a duty to fight injustice wherever it exists. It is lawyers who must lead the change against Indianity, poverty, domestic violence, caste discrimination, and other forms of exploitation. Victims of such exploitation often do not have the strength or skills to fight it on their own. If you are asked to pay a bribe, have the courage to refuse. If you are asked to support violence, Corruption or oppression have the courage to say no. If you, are, if you fear the pleasure, remember the breaking an unjust system is about making difficult choices. It is about enough people daring to make difficult choices and this can begin with you. Take your duties as a citizen seriously. As lawyers, you should have drive the fulfillment of democratic value and as a group must campaign for positive change in the society. Even as you represent your clients in their individual matters, you must always strive to preserve the rule of law, be the guardians of the fundamental rights of our citizens. Recent incidents of brutal assault and child rape in Delhi and some other places have shaken our society's collective conscience. They highlight the urgency with which we need to introspect at the erosion of value and our repeated failure to ensure the safety and security of our women and children. There is need for us in India to reset our moral compass. We must collectively ensure the dignity and respect for women at all times. The legal fraternity, especially students of law, must be in the vanguard of the battle for women's security rights, dignity, and welfare. Universities like NLU must take the lead in meeting contemporary moral challenges and ensuring nine essential civilizational values, such as love for motherland, performance of duty, compassion for all, tolerance for pluralism, Respect for women, honesty in life, self-restraint in conduct, responsibility in action, and 
Ohananda of discipline. This should be fully engaged in our young minds. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, on this occasion, let me have the opportunity in the first convocation of National Law University Delhi to congratulate all the distinguished award winners, particularly our lady students who backed all 12 gold medals. But at the same time, I will conclude by urging upon you, by appealing to all of you, be the vanguard in the change and bring socio-economic transformation for we, we have our dest <coughs> destiny with this nation long years ago. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. President, for your wonderful message. I have the honor to request the Chancellor to declare the conversation closed.